speed number is getting him from two to two and a half down to two to two and a half up. He's he's probably got it going a little bit more, like 10 to 15 more yards in the air carry, um, which has helped him. He's had to move his body lines a little bit more right to to sh hit that shot straight. Uh, one thing that we've done, I'll give Andrew Rice credit for this one. Um, I've worked a lot with Andrew, and he's he's um, helping me out with track man stuff. And uh, Andrew's box drill, where he puts an empty sleeve of balls in, in front of this ball to improve the angle attack, has helped out quite a bit as well. Yeah. Can you explain how you've increased your angle of attack? Have you done it with your body, or are you doing it with your arms and your hands? Or yeah, I mean he's doing it with with you know the width that we made reference to on the downswing, trying to trying to feel like it's a little bit shallower. I mean the ball position obviously is significantly further forward. He's got more tilt to the right, so all those things are making it a little bit easier for him to more side tilt catch it on minor, the ball. Yeah, yeah, minor adjustments to set up, just a little bit of a maybe a hip tilt to to help with that width coming down is a big one for me. Uh, but doing the box drill really makes me do all of that. It doesn't make you tip back too much. Or? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Um, well, we can show you. We'll, dem we'll demonstrate, but not because it, it's... That had a buff 21 and carry 177. Yep. <laughs> you want to bet now? No, thank you. <laughs> so higher. Yeah, with one of those Higher. Yeah. Oh, no, they, they remain the same. I'm curious. I'm curious. But, all right, higher. So higher. You want to explain? You want to end Yeah, good. You do it. You do it. Go ahead. As I said before, the, the ball position is the same. The manipulation is through impact, right? So two ways I hit this shot. We work them both. They're both uh, um, reliable. It really depends on on how I'm feeling that day. There is the shot I learned from uh, my uh, short game instructor, James Sigman, about this really high bunker shot. Um, and it's explosive from a certain point through the follow through, and it has a bit of a scooping motion with the hands. I applied that to this shot, I also applied that to the driver, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So there are two ways. First, I either try to feel like at impact, everything stops except the club face, it keeps moving, it's the harder way of doing. Or I try to create a lot more width coming down, meaning separating my hands from my body as I come through, which also allows me to get, by the time I get to the ball, I'm a little more behind it and a little shallower, which gets the ball going up. I'll hit two of the high ones, one of each, so you can see the difference. The first one is this, this scoopy one. And stuff like that and getting the ball pinned high. So in the past, before we had track man, when Alex was was uh, flighting the ball differently, you know, we would do, we would do different things that, you know, would, I'm sure you think were common, move the ball position, you know, change his setup a little bit, wait a little bit more forward or more back, depending on what kind of shot he was hitting. And he would be able to flight the ball differently the way he wanted to, but oftentimes his um, carry distances would change, the dispersion would change a little bit. So we did this about, uh, got a, a pretty quickly after we had the machine, um, when he was, he was pretty dialed in, we started to change. Yeah. Well, with the machine is easier because the, the the sessions are shorter. I mean, I can I can put in 45 to an hour time of work and get in what I would have normally in two or three hours. Uh, like I said before, there's no guessing, so it's much easier to diagnose what's going on. The good thing that we do uh, is that we're not really striving for a specific number, uh, perfecting a specific number or relationship, but we're looking for a range. As long as with, I'm within that range, I'm in playing conditions. And that goes for both the draws and fades as, as it does for the higher, medium, and lower ball flights. Now, how can I tell without the machine that I'm doing it right? A couple of things that we can do. Well, first of all, I can pay attention to the ball flight and realize something's wrong, uh, in which case I give them a call. I might send them a video, whatnot. The other thing is uh, I can set up uh, a stick that... 10 yards or so, 15 yards ahead of the ball. We'll go on to talk about dynamic loft, changing the dynamic loft at impact. You're gonna notice that I'm gonna hit three very different ball flights, maintaining a similar distance from the exact same place. So that'll answer. Yes? When you, when you start getting a little too steep, like you said, what do you, what do you work on? A couple things. Um, 
One thing that's helped him is practicing out of a fairway bunker, trying to push it a little bit more. Uh, that's something that we've done with sort of more like mid irons, which has helped him quite a bit. Um, getting a little wider on the downswing, Alex sometimes gets a little bit narrow coming down and, and gets a little bit down on it. So probably the two biggest things I would say is is um, feeling a little bit wider coming down, bigger arc coming down to shallow it out and, and practicing out of a fairway bunker. Also when he moves his body lines a little bit more to the right, he has an easier time of you know catching a little bit more sweepy. Yeah, you said you were experimenting. What are you experimenting <laughs> with? Is there anyone here that works for TaylorMade? TaylorMade? No. no. There isn't. Okay. Yeah, so Alex has, uh, because of the way that these these clubs are, he has a. It's amazing. I mean, like like a lot of tour players, he has an amazing feel for being able to tell when off the heel or off the toe. And I find this has been happening a lot. He's got these new Rocket Blades irons here, and when we first started getting these, I would be recording numbers, and I would know that he missed a shot. For example, I, I would the number would be five yards shorter than normal, and I would I would say to him, you know, did you miss that one a little bit? And he would always say, no, I hit that one solid. And I was sort of surprised because in the past he's had you know unbelievable feel in knowing when he hits one solid or misses one. These clubs, because they are forgiving as they are, he has a really difficult time feeling when he hits one solid and when he hits it a little bit towards the toe and the heel. So we were messing around with the track man guys, Francis and Justin, this morning, and he was getting some toe hits and. Um, he, he was uh, he was really hitting the draw spin that we want, but not the face to path numbers that we want because they were a little bit more towards the toe. Uh, whereas with with a little bit more of this this uh, what do you got there, Callaway blade? Yeah. Yeah. So he's got a little bit more feel for where he's hitting on the face. Because he, he gets a little bit more defined with the path, and he and he's able to dictate how it's curving. Does that make does that make sense? It, it's like you know so when he's off, he's only a little off. You know, he's trying to hit a little draw, and he hits a little fade. So. When I, when I move the numbers even more, he, he, he's able to get it back, start seeing the ball flight that he's feeling, and then he can sort of pull the reins back a little bit. Yeah. For a stock draw, yeah. you were saying, is, it, is that the numbers that would you, would you call a stock draw? For yeah, for the most part. I mean, that, that's, five, uh, yeah, it's probably more like, yeah, you know, four and two, five and three, something like that. That's pretty within a degree, though. Alex, I have one question. Just for tournament conditions, are you, are you happy with that much right to left movement from a six iron? I feel like that's a lot of movement. I'm just watching it peel left when it lands. I mean, I feel like under tournament conditions, that would be trouble. The wind's going a little Yeah, no, I, I understand. But it... We got a little bit of wind from right to left today, but you're right. I like to see it a little less uh, movement through the air. Having said that, um, I had just, you know, played a, a tournament last week. I really didn't touch a club this week, and I had a, a bit of a long flight coming in tomorrow, I mean, last night, so I'm not on, on, 100% on. Um, Although, having said that, I'd rather, when in a practice session like this, uh, I'd rather see more of it, as Jason just spoke about, than less of it. I mean, it's easier for me to tone it down, say, from a five or a six path down to a two or a three path, than it is for me to go from the other way around, from a two to a four or a five. Because usually when my path is so close to zero, I struggle with swing direction. And therefore, I start trying to hit draws and end up hitting fades. Not good. So... In practicing and getting it together, I'd rather have it be more and a lot of curve and then tone it down from there because at least I know that the swing direction is going the, 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 the proper way as opposed to the other way around. Go ahead. Alex, with your club pass uh, left of his line because he wants it to start left, he's going to feel the handle a little bit more lower through the ball and he's going to try to get that ball cutting back to the right a little bit. Pretty good there for a wind going right to left. Right, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Your ball average starting left. So being able to hit a draw with an open face and a very limited release through the ball by having the handle swing ahead of the ball at impact is great. Um, and the fade obviously just goes to the left. But to answer your question, there is no roll or hold on. The draw, the path is obviously moving to the, to the right and the hands are higher through impact. The draw, I mean the fade, the, the path is moving to the left and, and the hands are lower through impact. Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily feel a difference in lateral motion. I feel a difference in, in follow through and in, in, in the finish in my swing. Like when I'm hitting a, it's opposite from from what I what I was taught when I was a kid. And when I'm hitting a draw now, I have a really high finish, or it feels to me like it's a really high finish. When I'm hitting a draw, and when I'm hitting a cut, I have a rounder, flatter finish. And uh, I don't know how many tournaments I've watched where people are talking about you know see such and such player. Oh, he's hitting a fade. Look at the high finish. And to me, now that's backwards. It feels like I'm hitting a draw, and my finish is really high in my hands, and a fade is more around my body. But I don't necessarily 
dislocate my body more laterally, hitting one or the other. It's just really the height of the follow through. So I guess I can try and go for a 70 yard. Let's see. So it's just the speed of the rotation, really. I, I try to push this one to, say, 100. That's probably 97 or so. What about a 70 yard shot that's spinning? 95. What? What about a 70 yard shot that's spinning? 70 yard shot with more spin, I'll probably use the other club. I'm, I'm playing this with a 54 degree wedge. I would probably use a 60 degree wedge, which would make me accelerate a little more and create more spin. But again, without this, we would have never known that, you know. So uh, it's helped us in many, many, many different ways.